tema, kuri yra labai aktuali Lietuvos šauliams, tai yra ginklų laikimas namuose. Ir kaip ir vakarykščiai įvykiai turbūt parodė, kad apie ginklus Lietuvoje tikrai reikia kalbėti. Reikia kalbėti, reikia diskutuoti. Ir labai būtų naudinga iš tikrųjų išgirsti patirtį, gerąją patirtį iš mūsų kolegų. Todėl kviečiu Estijos gynybos lygos Skaitsą Litvadą, pona Mylis Kiliai. Jo pranešimo tema – priskirtų ginklų laikimas namie, sukarintų visuomeninio organizacijų narių tarpę. Už ir prieš. The floor is yours. Dear friends, it's so good to come back and see so many old friends and colleagues. So I feel more like at home. And um, I heard so many good, good, good words about Estonia. So uh, every now and then I had difficulties to recognize whether that is my country or not. So if that is any consolation to you, I, 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 I can say that we have a myriad of problems on our own. So that makes us uh, in a human side again. So don't worry about this. We, we, if we have uh, problems, we make mistakes. That's not a problem. It is a uh, making mistakes. Controversially, human beings learn from the mistakes more than from our successes. Sin is to repeat these mistakes. But um, my topic today is uh, uh, and I know there is a great interest in, uh, in, in uh, Lithuanian society uh, having uh, weapons at home. But I'd like to put that seemingly very simple question in the context of the security situation and, and in the context of the society. And it's really up to you to make up your own minds and uh, really to, to see what the best for the uh, Lithuanians or Lithuanian state. Personally, I am very glad that Estonian Defense League has, and the, the Defense League members have the weapons at home. There are many reasons, and I will come back to that during my presentation. So the, um, in order you to understand the context, uh, I will walk you through the, uh, the, the Estonian Defense League and later the next speaker will amend me what are the expectations of the, of the society to the uh, uh, Estonian Defense League. But uh, what is the Defense League? As you can see, the, our coat of arms, it already tells something. It is uh, the Nordic Eagle. It always looks in the east. You have a coat of arms, and under that is the uh, uh, sword. That means that uh, our military is always subordinate to our society. So we serve our society. Now, the, uh, going to, and I already talked about the uh, Estonian Defense League. By the way, normally I don't do PowerPoint presentations, but uh, today I decided to visualize some of the uh, Estonian Defense League essence, uh, a, a, uh, uh, what does that mean to us? And uh, if there is a lot of uh, reading, to, uh, there is not a lot of reading, don't worry about that. The pictures are, or the, the, the schematics is what you really need to, to look at. So the Estonian Defense League was created actually already back in 1918. 1918, and that was a citizen's initiative. That was because we had a practical need for that. Uh, First World War was about to, uh, to end, and there were a, a demoralized Russian troops and Bolsheviks retreating. On the way, they murdered and, and looted uh, local villages. And that was where the people organized themselves. They uh, raised in a self-defense, meaning that they wanted to defend themselves, their homes, their villages, their communities. And later during the, uh, uh, later during the uh, independence war, the numbers grew up to 99,000. That is a big number uh, if, uh, if to take into account that 
uh, back then we were slightly above the 1 million. And I can tell today our numbers are 25,000, so there is a, we have a long way to go. That said, it was after the, uh, after the independence war, Defence League was dismissed. Because there was a general feeling, uh, the war has ended, we have a peace treaty with Russia, uh, we are among the, uh, the democratic uh, nations community, there is no need for that kind of organization. And in the peace treaty, there was one of the paragraphs what said that the Soviet Russia will, uh, that, that, that the peace between Soviet Russia and Estonia is going to last forever. So how long is the forever? So it took four years when they had the first attempt. In 1924, 1st of December, communists tried to have a coup and uh, luckily, they didn't succeed. So the naivety was abandoned and uh, Estonian Defense League, uh, League was recreated to be uh, dismissed in 1940 when the occupation started. But you can see it was the first organization to dismiss. It was the first organization and the uh, organization what the uh, occupation of powers were so afraid of. And I will come back to that and ask the, the same question whether uh, the deterrence or whether that fear is still there. So the uh, Estonian Defense League, we have our own act. We don't, uh, but that said, it doesn't mean that we act independently. No, we don't. It's our activities are synchronized with the defense forces. And when I come back, to the, when I show how the uh, Estonian Defense League is organized, then you realize that it is not a, just a reserve component, but that is organization what comes from the society. So we actually maintained or managed to, to keep the same principle that this is a citizen's initiative and this is still needed. So, our mission. Mission is to safeguard our sovereignty, our people. And again, since that is a citizen uh, uh, growing up from the citizen's initiative, it is the human centric. First of all, we need to take care of our people and the people we take care of, the uh, uh, state. So it goes, that's the logic. And also, the, uh, we are taking uh, great pride and the responsibility to educate our citizens. Now, the uh, uh, seemingly I'm drifting away from the weapons at home, but that is all inclusive. That means that weapons at home, they are just a tool. With a, without a human interaction, without a uh, human factor and uh, organized factor, the weapons are nothing. We need to get into people's uh, minds to understand them and to, to really feel that they are needed and that they are patriots. Security carpet. That is the main concept or cornerstone of Estonian Defence League. You know that uh, Estonian Defence League, uh, each and every community or municipality in Estonia have Defence League members. So we are spread all over the country. So we know the local people, we know the terrain, we know the human uh, geography. We are the first responders to a, uh, many uh, uh, challenges, be it a military challenge or a civil uh, man-made uh, disaster. doesn't matter. The Defence League is quickly mobilizable and the uh, Defence League is well organized. So that makes us owners of the land. That is also not a, uh, uh, that's probably that very, very aspect uh, is, is used for that reason that uh, 
Estonian Defence League two years ago, we, we, we assumed a uh, territorial defence responsibility. That's meaning that we are responsible for the plans and the conduct of that and the integration of the armed forces with that under the uh, Chief of Defence Command. So a unit of command is maintained. So the uh, security carpet and territorial defence, again, that is the cornerstone and I want you to remember that. Structure, leadership and chain of command. Democratic organisation in uh, many ways. Citizens' initiative, it means, uh, I can also call that, uh, that slide not only a structural leadership and chain of command, but it, the slide represents the checks and balances. So, being a bottom-up initiative, that means that uh, volunteers, Estonian Defence League members, they all volunteers except for very few who are uh, regular soldiers. But the regular soldiers, they are only 2% of our structure. I am a regular, former volunteer, but became a regular. Most of my career, I passed it in the, in the, uh, in the army. But uh, if you can see, uh, we have a colleagal leadership, meaning that we have a, uh, and by the way, I need to be very careful because the member of board of the elders sitting there and uh, I need to behave. <laughs> uh, Mr. Avik, so he's the member of the uh, board of elders. They are our advocates, they are speaking to, to the public. They speak what the ordinary military cannot. But also I have a central board uh, well, which, ca which assists me to lead their organization, and then Estonian Defense League have a general assembly. That is, if to compare wha with uh, what, what it is like, that is our parliament, where uh, district commanders and elected members coming together and they make decisions, and I, am, I report to them how the money is spent, how the uh, uh, tasks are uh, achieved, etc., etc. There is only one exception. When it comes to the military tasks, assembly have no say. Military is strictly under the uni uh, United Command, and uh, I have to follow the uh, Chief of Defense uh, tasking. So the uh, General Assembly uh, doesn't have anything. So the, uh, what does it mean? It is our actions must be very transparent, and we, we, are, we have even a revision commission there. And that also that um, we know each other. In order to become a member of Estonian Defence League, new member must have uh, two sponsors from Defence League members. So it is a very close-knit family. That is uh, self-control and that is control of, uh, control of your peers. Plus, it is our uh, security service does all the screening. So actually, you can see that these citizens who joined the Estonian Defense League have no criminal connections, have no uh, anti-government anti or undemocratic uh, uh, belongings. Right. But I, I will not go into that uh, too, too deep, so you can see that actually I have a three masters, Chief of Defense, General Assembly, and Minister of Defense. Right, let's move on. Again, ideal is for everyone. It is not only the warriors we are talking about. And uh, by the way, uh, symbolically, I have divided the Estonian Defense League in three different categories. Uh, first are the warriors, second are the enablers, and third are the multipliers. So, and I will come back to the multiplying uh, action later uh, during my presentation. But as you can see, EDL is, everyone, uh, is for everyone. That means that is not exclusive organization. That is inclusive organization. 
we have a women organization embedded in under the uh, uh, Defense League and the uh, boys and girls. Proportion is different than here in Lithuania. The uh, uh, two third of the of the uh, members are adult members, and only one third they are the uh, the kids. But for the children, it is not the military education what we are providing for them. For the children, we are providing them skill sets what help them to be a good citizens, what help them to be engaged later in the in their lives. When they join uh, Defense League later, that is just a bonus. Right. Girls for women and kids. That's what we are talking about the uh, that's when we are talking about the um, enablers, because everybody must have a position. They take a lot of burden from the warriors. They're not the kids, but uh, uh, but the, the women. Uh, we are providing. They are providing us uh, staff assistance. They are providing us field catering. They do a lot of of uh, uh, patriotic patriotic tasks and you know the uh, for us Estonian Defense League stands on three pillars the foundation is already as I mentioned is the citizens initiative then we do uh, then we provide a uh, military capabilities then the civil support and then defense will and I emphasize defense will that is act of patriotism and for me, that is the most important slide. By the way, I nicked it from the Americans, so the, uh, I'm not demanding that this is my own creation. But uh, it seemed to me that it is very illustrative, so I, I, I really uh, got it uh, from the FMO5. But it is a sort of the representation of, um, uh, representation of uh, society. These black dots. They are members of Estonian Defence League, nodes, if you will. They are linked with each other. And that means that we are creating, and now think back of the, the security carpet. It's not only the functional, it is also a territorial links. But um, they are connected with each other. So Estonian Defence League creates a network. We have, uh, literally we have uh, every profession in Estonia represented in Estonian Defense League. We have uh, doctors, engineers, plumbers, bulldozer drivers, just name it. So that is all inclusive again. But you, you can see that there are white dots as well and the other networks. And that is multiplying force. Because each and every Estonian Defense League member have their own social and professional networks. And how does that multiplying force work? For instance, the, uh, once we had an exercise, and next to our exercise there was a car accident with uh, quite severe injuries. Um, on that exercise, one paramedic took part. And uh, the exercise was, of course, quickly cancelled and uh, the first aid given. But the paramedic did not provide the first aid. He did not give the first aid because the others did. What did do the what what did the paramedic do? He was hanging on the telephone, calling to his ambulance team, providing a location of that uh, accident site and character of the injuries. And the ambulance, in turn, activated their own hospital network. So that's how. Estonian Defence League works. So that is the multiplying force. And what we do? Spectrum of tasks. You can see on the pictures. Actually, I, if I had only that slide, I would... The others are not necessary. As you can see, uh, territorial defence, uh, providing a military service, military skill sets, but in the middle there is also one of very important things 
very important tasks, what the Estonian Defence League does, that is educating young people at school. It is educating them about the state defence and security. So, and on, on the right top, you can see also that the Estonian Defence League is a very good platform to bring together the best, best brains in Estonia in the cyber matters. But that is not our topic today. Our topic is weapons. So I am leaning back now to the weapons, why we need to have weapons at home, and uh, uh, what kind of a uh, what kind of uh, benefits we have from that. And just very briefly, we also know that in the defense league, we don't one does not ch ch jump over one's own shadow. We are and we will remain a light infantry. But light infantry requires skillful use of, of infantry weapons, sidearms, anti-tank guns, and uh, some support guns. So that is our training process. And I am only presenting it to you today for reason that you can see that we take training very seriously indeed. After the first year, you can say that basic skills are, are given. That first year is the test period. During that year, we are not granting a uh, military arms to anyone except for the exercises and, and uh, Tactical, uh, practical lessons. Once they have graduated and got the access and, uh, and license, they have qualified to carry arms. From that point on, they can have their weapons at home. Right. Conclusion. Estonian Defence League members are loyal and patriotic citizens who manifest their, their defense will through their voluntary contribution to the state security. They are well trained. They are first responders to the hybrid threats. They are multipliers of the common power tools. So down there is a rhetoric question. How, ca how can we not trust them? It is also a question of trust. We live in a good neighborhood, yes. All of our neighbors are good except for one. We have seen a recently their intent to occupy other territories. Our lessons learned from history tell us that, that the intent is still there. So I believe that the need for that kind of organization is still there. Defense League is a very relevant organization. We have a new threat. And I, when I elaborated that or did my presentation, I tried to elaborate that. So what are the contemporary threats? There are myriads of others. But two main threats are the uh, hybrid attack and terrorism. And since our neighbor is autocratic regime. His strength is making very quick decisions. From political decision to action, it's not month what we were talking about. It's days or even hours. So, what is the strength of terrorists? It's always surprise. They can pop up at any time, any point, and it, as it once was said, we need to succeed every time. Terrorists need to succeed only once to make their point. So that requires a adequate response. Timely action and deterrence. And I think that uh, actually, um, it's not the armed soldiers what make the deterrence or 
adequate and quick response. It is the armed citizens who we can trust makes a deterrence. And it is also a great multiplier of the, the state tools if we can rely that at any time, at each and every uh, geographical location in our country, we can have critical mass of well-trained quick response forces. So, and for us in Estonia, it's actually quite, quite natural. We, 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 it was from a uh, 90s uh, already when we had uh, weapons at home. It's because probably that we, we uh, re-instituted the Defence League on the, uh, on the legal basis, on the, on the, on the uh, heritage, or inherited that, uh, that legal base what was before the Second World War. It also provided us a living memory from uh, as, as uh, many members of the uh, pre-occupation uh, Defence League were still alive. So for us, that is quite natural. And I, I can tell you that at least last 10 years, I cannot recall any accident or incidents with, uh, with uh, Defence League weapons. So it is a question of trust, need, and very pragmatic approach. By the way, I am as a commander, my goal is, is to, uh, to have up to 70% of the uh, weapons stored at home. And that does not only include the sidearms or the uh, automatic rifles. We also have machine guns and on uh, very rare occasions also anti-tank guns uh, in the hands of our members. So that ends my short introduction to that and you, we can to, uh, discuss pros and cons and uh, I can provide you my perspective on, on the weapons and, and voluntary force. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kili. Thank you. Before we move on, any questions for our uh, prelegant? Yes, we have uh, like uh, time for two questions. So we have one question here, please, and one question here, please. Just wait for a microphone, please. Uh, hello, um, just a short question uh, on different matter. How is the organization financed? Is that, where does the money come from? Because uh, <laughs> it's, it's an interesting question for me. Literally, we have uh, two budgets. One is our own budget, uh, and we are, uh, by, uh, by all means, Estonia Defence League is the second largest real estate owner in Estonia. The, the uh, Lutheran Church is first, but soon we're going to beat them, so we're going to get more, more real estate. But that's that's joke. But most of our budget comes from the. It, we are state sponsored, so. Approximately 8% of the uh, defense spending goes for the uh, Defense League. Thank you. Your question, please. Thanks for your presentation. Uh, I have a question, maybe not very polite from political <laughs> side, but uh, we all know that you have about 20 more percent of uh, citizens, uh, Estonian citizens, who are, you have uh, Russian nationality. Are we participating in Defense League equally with the Estonians, or uh, we stay aside a little bit more, or how you deal with this? Uh, first Thanks. of all, actually, the uh, uh, the engagement in in Defense League matters does not uh, go along the, na the the ethnic lines. It goes along the uh, loyal loyalty lines, and we have some Russian-speaking uh, subunits, particularly in Narva. But I also admit that the number does not represent, uh, represent the, uh, the uh, proportion of Russians living in Estonia. So the uh, Russian-speaking uh, Defence League members are a big mi uh, minority. But we do have our other nationalities as well. So w actually, most exotic being uh, three, three people from India are members of the, the Defence League. So as I said, we have grown already a global power now. Thank you. Okay, General, it's nice to see, first of all, I would like to say that it's nice to be here in Lithuania. We've known each other since 2011. 
most probably the question I, I would like to ask is, you know, about the strategic leadership and about the, uh, you know, strategic leadership in, in Estonia, because I know that a lot of parliament members, the former ministers and uh, prime ministers, even president, uh, are the members of the Kaiserlit, of the really, really successful organization. I'm talking about that because, you know, since 2014, when uh, everything happened in Ukraine, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, known people have entered or, uh, and became members of the Riflemen in, in Lithuania. So, but uh, I don't know the numbers, uh, I know the people, some of them, but uh, would you please uh, tell us, you know, how many these top leaders are in your organization as a members? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, quite a number. Quite many, and uh, well, of course we don't use them as a rifleman. Uh, it would be a waste of the resource, but we use them as advocates for our cause. And uh, well, it may tempt me to say, a uh, Minister of Defence, uh, go on your face and give me 25, but I would be very stupid, and uh, that eight percent will be reduced to a two percent only. But uh, but 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 really, that's a great help, and uh, that gives. Being a politician, that's another profession, and as I already mentioned, we have uh, doctors, engineers, we have uh, politicians. What is unique about that? When the politicians join our exercises, so far all of them have been able to put aside their political agenda, because at every point, possible point, we emphasize that the Estonian Defense League is strictly a political organization. And we've been able to maintain that, and sometimes you can see the, uh, uh, the local, from a local municipality, the, uh, from a elected members, the uh, opposition and coalition, they come together and, and then they really can put aside the, the differences and work for their own co uh, well, they're, they're, they're good for the country. Thank you very much for your inputs. And this is a token of our appreciation from the Lithuanian Rifleman Union. Thank you very much, General. Thank you.